Hello everyone, Dr. Data Science here to teach you data science methods and tools today, tomorrow, and beyond. In this video series, we are going through the textbook Dive into Deep Learning. Where can you find this textbook? This textbook is available at d2l.ai. So that's the, uh, the URL for this textbook. And the nice thing about this textbook is that it's an interactive and free textbook uh, that you can learn about deep learning via code, math, and discussions. So it has a really nice balance between these three components. Obviously, you can find textbooks that are much more uh, rigorous in terms of mathematical analysis, and you can find textbooks that are just uh, purely focusing on uh, implementations. But this textbook has a really good balance between uh, code, math, and also discussing about uh, important topics that, uh, that you encounter when using deep learning methods. And the other advantage about this uh, textbook is that because it is interactive, uh, you have access to all implementations using NumPy, PyTorch, and TensorFlow. However, in this video series, we mainly focus on PyTorch because it's becoming very popular. Uh, but if you need TensorFlow or other sort of like libraries, you can obviously use those things in this textbook. And this has been adopted across different universities and countries and continents. So it's a very uh, popular and interesting textbook. And my goal here is that to go through uh, different um, sections here and chapters of this textbook, textbook. So for example, you can see that in the preliminaries, we have data manipulation, data pre-processing, linear algebra. And today we're gonna start with data manipulation and then go step by step. And then we talk about multi-layer perceptrons. Uh, convolutional neural networks, modern convolutional neural networks, recurrent neural networks, and so on. So don't forget, this textbook is available at d2l.ai. So without further ado, let's get um, started. And the way that we work is that I give you quick notes, um, and then uh, we go through Google um, Collab, which is sort of like a Jupyter notebook on the cloud. And I have another video discussing how to use Google uh, collab if you're not familiar, but you know, again, Python code is Python code and you can use your favorite IDE or um, Jupyter Notebook you're on machine, like however you feel uh, more sort of comfortable. So so the, the basic idea in um, deep learning is something that is called tensor. So what is, uh, what is tensor? So tensor is multi-dimensional array of numerical values. So let's say um, you want to measure the temperature today in Boston, Massachusetts, and let's say today is 65 degrees, right? And now we want to study whether there is a pattern in climate change, right? So now you want to store uh, temperatures over the last, let's say, um, 5,000 days, right? Um, so in this case, you will end up with array of numerical values, right? We have more than one numerical value. And the way that we can do this is that um, we can either put a, a set of numbers in one axis, right? Just putting them together, I see here using this arrow, or we can put this in, let's say, two axes, right? So let's say uh, you want one axis refers to like time steps and the other one corresponds to like different locations in um, Boston that you measure temperature and you can also include other axes, right? Uh, for example, um, uh, for example, like uh, temperature and humidity and other sort of like information that you are interested in to have a better idea of uh, the problem that you are trying to solve. Um, and the simplest one, which we have one axis, this is something that we call vector in, in mathematics and linear algebra. And the other one that is two axes, this is what we call as metrics, right? So metrics has two uh, dimensions. And something that uh, I, I want to emphasize here, and I have this here, is that when we have a tensor, if we say what's the dimension of tensor, we typically mean that uh, the, uh, what is the number of axes here. However, when we say what's the dimension of axis, that means that the number of elements in that axis, or what is known as the length of, uh, uh, of that axis, right? So this is something to keep in mind because sometimes uh, we, we overuse or overload the term dimension. So keep in mind that the dimension of a tensor is the number of axes, but the dimension of axis is the number of elements uh, in that axis. And I know it, it is uh, confusing. 
And one thing that is very useful to find this information about the number of axes and length of them is using dot shape when you have a tensor, as we will see very soon. Uh, the other thing that we are going to talk about it uh, very soon is the topic of concatenating uh, tensors, right? So let's say now you have two tensors, one for Boston and the other one, let's say, um, for, um, I don't know, like, let's say, Watertown or Cambridge, right? Uh, They're close to each other. And so now you want to put these together. So now you can define what axis you want to connect them together, right? So uh, axis zero is always this one. This is what's axis zero. And this one is axis one, right? So if I say that I want to concatenate two arrays uh, with axis one, so you see that how we put them together. And if you want to concatenate them using axis zero, that's how we put them together. And remember that when you concatenate uh, tensors or merge tensors, uh, you must have the, the, the same shape except the one that you are uh, concatenating uh, across that dimension, right? So you can see that here. Uh, let's say I want to concatenate across axis one. So then the axis zero of these two arrays or tensors uh, should be exactly the same. Otherwise, you know, you will uh, not be able to do uh, this task. So now let's go to our um, uh, sort of like Google Clap and start um, using PyTorch. Okay, so now we are in Google Clap. Uh, we are going through the first uh, sort of like section of chapter two, which is data manipulation. Obviously, if you need this code, it's in the textbook, but I have uh, provided them in this Google Clap and we're going through this. Uh, so the first step is that when you want to use PyTorch is to import it. And remember that in order to import PyTorch, you need to say import torch. So there's no PY or Py here. Uh, that's something to keep in mind. I, I sometimes see this is a sort of like problem. So, so we are going to import torch. And what we are going to do now, if you want to, let's say, um, generate a set of, let's say, integers from zero to some number, you can use torch.arrange, right? So if you're familiar with NumPy, this is very much similar to NumPy.arrange, uh, where being given, like, let's say, a point, like here, like 12, you will create numbers from zero up to that point. So that's what we see here. And one thing again that I like about um, Google Cloud is that if I just use this comma here, you see the documentation here, right? So arrange, uh, you can have a starting point where the default value is zero. So here we didn't define it, so that's where we are. And you have to define the end point, so that's 12. You can also define the step size, you can use the type of integer you want, uh, or say the type that you want, so you want integer, float, um, or anything else. Um, and, and so this is very useful. So I, I definitely recommend you to always look at this uh, documentation when you're working on um, any sort of like uh, functions here. So, so we are done with this part. So now we can look at the type of this variable x. And as you can see, this is torch.tensor. So the other thing, now I talk about, about the um, dot shape, which gives you the property of this um, tensor. And remember that when you're using dot shape, you don't have to use parentheses because this is a property, not a function. So whenever you want to run a function, you have to use parentheses. But here we don't use it because, um, you know, this is a property. And when I run this, you see that it says torch.size, and then I get sort of like one element here, which is... 12. So what this means is that I have uh, sort of like a tensor that has one axis and that axis has 12 elements, right? And if you're interested to find the total number of elements in a tensor, you use x.numel and you can see that here because we have a one axis and 12 elements, so we get 12, so that part is easy. And then the other thing that we can do is that sometimes you want to reshape uh, a tensor without changing its elements. So if you think about that X is a one dimensional tensor, right? And it is, uh, um, you know, has 12 elements. So I can rearrange these um, as three by four using X dot reshape. And then you give your desired uh, sort of like, you know, uh, like uh, lengths for each axis. So you can see here three times four is 12. So that's something that is possible. Otherwise, again, you get an error message. 
Uh, and you see that this is the result of uh, running this cell, right? Uh, and something that I want to pay close attention to right now is that you see we have um, sort of like, you know, um, this first sort of like, uh, I would say like the row of that tensor. And this is the first, second, and third. And now you have these extra uh, sort of like, you know, square brackets here. So that's something to uh, pay attention to because now we have two axes, right? Uh, so we have like these outer brackets and then we have these inner brackets here. So after doing this dot reshape, which if you look at it, now I store this in this uh, uppercase X instead of the lowercase. Now I can look at the shape and you can see that now you have two elements here, right? Three and four. So this, what this means is that I have two axes. The first axis has three elements and the second one has four, right? So remember what we had before. So we have one axis here and one axis here. This one has three elements. This one has uh, four elements, right? So that's, that's what it says here, right? Uh, and you can see here too, see like this is like uh, the four elements that you put in the in the first row and then this is the second and this is the third. So other ways to generate tensor is that like sometimes you just wanna create a tensor of all zeros, right? So here what I'm saying is that I want to have a tensor Y. Uh, so uh, this has all zero elements and has three axes. So two, three, and four elements uh, in these three axes. And when I run this, as you can see that, um, so uh, again, this is like what I want you to pay attention to. So now we have like this additional sort of like, you know, a square bracket here, right? So these are like the inner ones, right? And then you have this one, and then you have the third one here, right? So this is a three dimensional um, tensor. So meaning that we have three axes. And let's say if you want to have uh, access to the sort of like the, 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 the first element, right, uh, in the first axis, so you can see that um, that's what we get. So we get this entire um, tensor here that we have, right? So, uh, so that's how the indexing works here, right? So it's very similar to NumPy. And the way it works is that if you look at uh, in the one and index zero, you're going to um, the first axis that you have, and you're gonna pick that corresponding uh, elements uh, or tensors that you have there. And then um, let's say now you want to create a very similar uh, tensor with all elements uh, being one. So now we can use torch that once, two, three, four, and, and that's what you can see. So it, it, in terms of like the uh, number of axes and you know um, the number of elements in, act, act, in each axis, we have exactly the same uh, sort of like shape, but you know now we have all, uh, we have one. And again, you can use here this um, comma and you can see that you can uh, specify the, 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 the type that you want. You want integers, you want float uh, and, and so on. So that's something that you can do here. So the other thing that we can use um, uh, is that to create tensors that they have uh, randomly um, generated numbers using some distribution, right? And one of the most widely used distributions is the, um, the standard Gaussian or normal distribution uh, with a mean of zero and a standard deviation one. This is known as the standard Gaussian distribution. And in order to do this, you can use torch.randn. Right, so here you can say that torch dot rand n, and then you say three and four. So what this means is that you want to have um, two axes with one with three elements, the other one with four elements, and the numbers are uh, generated using this standard Gaussian distribution. So that's why you can see here these numbers are, uh, you know, roughly uh, distributed around zero. So let's run this cell. Um, so now let's talk about uh, creating a tensor from a Python list. 
So if you look at here, what we have is that this is a Python list, right? So we have like these uh, brackets and then, uh, you know, we have these, uh, uh, so like three uh, rows that each one has uh, four elements, right? So in order to create a, a tensor from this, you can use torch.tensor, right? So um, this is what now it gives you this sort of like tensor that we have uh, here. The other thing that we can do is element-wise operations. So let's say we create two one-dimensional uh, tensors, right? So the first one has four elements, one, two, four, eight, and the second one has all twos. Uh, and now we can, like, you know, find x plus y, x minus y, x times y, x divided by y, and x uh, to the power of y. So these double stars is the exponentiation. And what this does is that this is sort of like an element-wise operation, right? So when you are trying to, to, let's say, add x and y, what would happen is that you take this one and this one, and then you add them together, so you obviously get uh, 3, right? And then you have 2 and 2, which you get uh, 4. Or for exponentiation, which is the last one, you will going to take 8 to the power of 2, which you get 64, right? Or 4 to the power of 2, which you get 16. So remember that uh, when, when you use like operation like plus, minus, you know, multiplication, division, these are element-wise operations. So you, you work with each element of um, each array and then you do the corresponding um, operation. You can even, um, so let's run this cell. I think I forgot to do that. Um, just to make sure that we get actually results that we are supposed to. Uh, you can also use um, other mathematical functions such as exponential function. Um, so if you remember like x, the first element of x is 1. And if you take the uh, exponential function to the power of 1, that's the 2.71, right? That's something that you probably remember uh, from calculus. Uh, the other thing that we're going to talk about that is about, as I said before, concatenating um, now, uh, tensors, right? So here, um, to do that, we are going to create two tensors, x and y. Uh, we use torch.arrange12, so that's the one that we had all the numbers from 0 to 11. We are going to use like floating numbers, and we're going to reshape these to be 3 by 4. And then we have y, uh, which is a tensor created from a Python list. Um, and this one is also 3 by 4. So in order to see this, I can even, um, you know, use x.shape and y.shape. So you can see that they're both 3 by 4, right? So now the important part is here. So you can use torch.cat for concatenating uh, these two tensors. And the way that it works is that you're going to use this parentheses x and y. And then you have to specify the dimension um, that you want to use for concatenation, right? So if you remember, I said this is uh, dimension or axis um, zero, right? So what this means um, is that if I want to concatenate these two across the first uh, sort of like, you know, axis or dimension, so that's one of these, um, so this is the x, and now we have here, this is y, right? So obviously here we use axis 0 to concatenate this, and we get an, another array, which is 6 by uh, 4. So now, in the next one that I'm going to use dimension 1, so now you can imagine that that's uh, dimension or axis 1. Um, so we are going to do this from the other side. So let's let's uh, look at this. So you can see that now we want to you concatenate x and y, and we use dimension equals one. So now we get three by eight, right? Because we use the axis one or dimension one. And we can do uh, beyond uh, concatenation. We can also use other operations on arrays. So one of them is, for example, like summing all elements in a tensor. And remember that when you do that, 
you basically end up with one scalar or one element, right? So that's why here when I say x.sum, I get a tensor that has only one element. Uh, and I can show you here, this is something interesting. If I say x dot shape now, uh, sorry, x dot sum dot shape, I forgot to use the parentheses here because it's a function. Uh, you see, you get torch that size, and then you don't find anything here, right? So, uh, you know, compare this to what you have seen before, right? You previously you saw like twelve or three and four. Here you don't see anything. This is because you have a so like one element. So in some sense, you don't have any more like arrays of numbers. So I wanted you to see this that this happens when you have only one uh, element in your tensor. So then in some sense, you don't even can define any more uh, the notion of access and elements in access and, and, and so on. However, when you do, um, let's say, summation, similar to what we talked about, that you can uh, specify the dimension or axis, right? So if I say x dot sum dot uh, that sum parentheses dim equals zero. So this means that we want to add everything across this axis. So this is axis zero, right? If you remember, uh, we just had this uh, a few moments ago. So now this means that I'm gonna just add all the sort of like elements in each column of that uh, X, right? Um, and these are the numbers that you get 12, 15, 18, and 21. And something that you can do here is that to use this keep dim or keep dimension equals to true. So what is the difference between these two? So you can see the one that we have on the top, uh, this is sort of like a, we only have one axis because we have one uh, set of square brackets, right? When you say keep dim equals to true, if you look at it now, we have two square brackets, right? Um, and, and that's sort of like the, and it's sort of like the difference, right? So we, we didn't necessarily get rid of one of the axes, we kept that one, right? So that's something very important to um, keep in mind. And I can run these cells again, so you can see this. And I just uh, can show you this here, using dot shape, you can always confirm your observations. So when I uh, don't say, set keep dim equals true, you can see that we have only four elements and this is only has one axis, right? But when I say keep dim equals true and use dot shape, right? So this means that all the elements in the first axis now they're collapsed together. So that's why I only have one sort of like um, element in that axis. And then I have four elements in the other axis, right? So that's like the main, difference here. So when in, in this case, we only have one axis, right? And that axis has four elements. Here we have two axes. One has one element, that's that one. And this one has four elements. So obviously for us, may not be a big difference between these two, but obviously for um, TensorFlow, uh, PyTorch, all these sort of like NumPy for all these uh, Python libraries, there's a big difference between these two cases, right? Because one has one axis, the other one has two axes. Uh, although one axis has one element, that's that's totally fine. But you know, that's something that uh, we have to keep in mind. And the other thing that is very important that we're going to use here is this idea of um, broadcasting. So this broadcasting is one of the most important things um, that we need to know. So let's say I have two tensors like A and B, and uh, you can see here that, um, as we can see, that A, which is the first one, uh, is three by one, and then the second one is one by two, right? So now the question is, what would happen if I add these two, right? So obviously I can't do element-wise operation immediately because they don't have the exact uh, or the identical um, sort of like number of axes and elements in, in each axis. So how does this work? Does this is going to work or not? And the answer is that yes, it is going to work. And it's something that is called broadcasting that I'm gonna show you right now. 
Okay, so now let's look at the broadcasting mechanism. So remember that the first one, the first array, which was, uh, or sorry, the first tensor was A, which was three by one, right? Has zero, one, two. So it has three elements and one element. And the other one was one by two. So the easiest way to look at this is that we have only one sort of like element in that axis. And we know that the other array has two elements in that axis. So this means that we can copy this, right, across this uh, second axis, right? If you remember, this is axis one, right? So I just write here. So this is um, axis zero, and this is axis number one, right? So this means that we are going to uh, copy this A across this uh, second axis, which is axis number one. Remember that the indexing starts from zero. And so now this would be three by two. Now the question is, can we make this uh, second tensor to be of shape three by two? And yes, we can, because if you look at it, this is one by two, and I can just copy this um, three times, right? And this way I get something that is three by two. And now we can perform element-wise operation here, which uh, gives us zero, for example, plus zero, one plus zero, two plus zero, and we can find these uh, sort of like, you know, summation here. So you can see that we had uh, originally two tensors, one three by one and the other one one by two, but the summation is three by two, and that's something that we call broadcasting, which is extremely useful. Because when you, what, when you think about this, what exactly happened here is that we have this A, and then we have this B has two elements. So what we have done is that we have at zero, the first element of B to all these elements of A, right, and put it here. And then we picked the second element, which is one, added to all the elements of A, and we put it here, right? So that's exactly something that we want to do and it's called broadcasting. So as we just saw, uh, we can define these two arrays and I can do A plus B. And now we know exactly why we get this three by two array. So now let's do a little bit more indexing here. So we have this array, uh, which we show with, by uppercase X. And let's say you use X and then you put zero. So remember that this X has two axes, right? But when you just put one number here, so this means that you're gonna slice based on the first axis, which is that axis number zero, right? So this means that now we're gonna just look at this, uh, you know, uh, so the like tensor that we have here, which we get zero, one, two, um, and uh, three. And when you use x negative one, so negative one here, one means that you want to look at the end of this sort of like uh, uh, sort of like array, right? So x negative one, you're gonna pick eight, nine, ten, and eleven. So this is very useful if you don't know exactly the index of the last sort of like element, right? So then you can just use x negative one, and you can similarly use x negative two, x negative three. So this follows exactly the indexing system in uh, in, in in Python. We can also do assignment. For example, we can uh, put uh, all these sort of like elements in the second and uh, third row to be all exactly B12. And you can see that here. And something that you need to also to keep in mind is about, um, about the memory usage when you're using um, different notations uh, here or different operations. So, you can use the ID function that is part of uh, like Python uh, that basically gives you the pointer that I you know shows where in the memory that you know array or tensor has been stored, right? So let's say I have um, the address of X before this operation here, and then I'm gonna add X and Y. Um, and here you can see that, so both of these so I can now refer to the same address, which is good because we are saving memory here. But if I remove this part, now you can see that we have two different numbers. So what this means is that let's say if you wanted to add two tensors and you wanna make sure that you are saving uh, memory as much as possible, 
you can use this sort of like, uh, you know, operation here to um, use the exact same location that you can see that now we have that. Or in this case, you can use this very famous way of writing X plus equals Y, which means that you're gonna add X and Y and then store it uh, at the same place. And that's what we get here. And finally, the last thing that we're gonna talk about, that it's very easy to convert a, a torch tensor to NumPy array. For example, you can use x.numpy. Again, this is a function, so you have to use parentheses. Uh, the only place that we really don't use parentheses is for dot shape or dot ending, which gives you the number of axes or the number of uh, dimensions of a tensor. Or you can also use torch from underscore numpy to create uh, a torch tensor from numpy. And you can here look at the type, which is again something that this is from Python that you can see that the first one is um, a NumPy n-dimensional array. That's what we call, you know, a NumPy n-dimensional array as nd array. And the second one, you know, which is B here, is uh, torch.tensor because now we created a, a, a torch tensor using torch.from underscore NumPy. Thank you for your attention, and I hope you find this uh, video series useful and next time we are going to go to the next uh, section of uh, the preliminaries chapter. Uh, please don't forget to like and subscribe.